Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Very warm welcome to all of you uh, today, sixth of sorry, tenth of June, twenty twenty-three. So we are starting our first series on lightning protection. So before we begin, uh, I would like to uh, inform you all that this uh, webinar is presented by. NFE, National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety. I know most of most of you who are participating uh, uh, in this webinar are members of uh, NFE. I will just like to show you uh, a website of uh, NFE. So this NFE is nothing but National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety. So our vision and missions are given very clear a statement. We shall strive to achieve our vision through getting accredited of products and personal certification. We shall focus on electrical safety by design, manufacturing, installation, and maintenance of electrical product and installation by competent and qualified manpower using quality resources, including product processes and procedures. And if you look at the what we do here in uh, NFE, create awareness on electrical safety. So this is we begin since last two months. We are now almost five months old uh, association. Within this five months, we are over 450 members and we have done fantastic events. We just concluded two days back in Ahmedabad. If you look at here, um, though it says upcoming event, this is just concluded uh, in Ahmedabad. So we associated with the Bureau of Indian Standard. We went around the country talking about National Electrical Code of India 2023, which is now made mandatory. It's mandatory to be designed, installed, and maintained. So we did complete in uh, uh, Ahmedabad. Then we went. We were in Hyderabad. Uh, before that, we were in uh, um, we were in Mumbai. Then Bangalore. Then Chennai. We begin NFE programs with one major seminar and decoding National Electrical of India in New Delhi. So in five months, we have test over thousand four hundred physical through physical seminar. Mr. Apavo sir, who is our general secretary, along with Krish, we went around the country. We covered as much as possible. It was two day hectic seminar. And Mr. Gopal Kumar, the president and our general secretary is compiling a document, the summary of this uh, webinar that we conducted, sorry, the seminar that we conducted. So we'll be released very soon to all the members of NFE. Why you should become a member of NFE? If you look at here, it's very simple. If you're not a member, just go here, open the website called NFEES, NFEES.org. When you click here, you have an option to become a member. So once you click here, you have either you can become individual member. If you are an international member, very simple. And if you're a student, it's only 500 rupees uh, a fee. Then we have corporate. So we have very good response, uh, response from a lot of corporates. Uh, corporate advantage is four members can participate in all our program. Some of the programs are free for members, only for only for member. Some of the accreditation or a certification program that we are now going to launch very soon. Uh, which will be on chargeable basis for non-members, a member will get a subsidy, a subsidized rate. So um, these are the benefit. If you go to the website, you will get to know. The membership is online. The moment you become, uh, when you make your payment, you'll get your certificate, welcome address, payment receipt, everything on your mail. So I would urge my friends who are joined in this webinar, to join our hands to make our nation 
electrically safe. So only by coming together, we can achieve our goal, which is making our nation electrically safe. So with me, ladies and gentlemen, I have the speaker for the day, Mr. Gopakumar, who is also the president of NFE and is the managing director of Cape Electric. As you all know, the well-known face has been addressing since last two, two and a half years over 200 webinars on various subjects. He's been a member of technical committee of NEC IS 732, ETD 30, ETD 50, National Building Code, and international uh, organization like IEC. So he has been traveling around, making sure that the codes are reaching to every engineers in the country. Everybody understand about the code. Myself, my name is Dominic. So I've been in the fire industry for quite some time. So the reason to take active role in NFE is to understand the root cause for the fire. Whenever there's a fire, without even investigating, we just say it is due to short circuit. So I thought, why this is happening? Why is it? Is it just because wrong installation we are getting fire? Or is it some other reason? So I'm working very closely with NFE to ensure that we educate every engineer, every installation engineer, that how to do best practices, how to uh, install and maintain electrical systems. So ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about lightning protection measures for outdoors. So our speaker, Mr. Gopu Kumar, will be presenting and sharing valuable insight on safeguarding living being in open areas and outside structure from the hazards of lightning. So in this first edition of lightning protection, we will focus, focus on shedding light on the accident that, that can occur due to side flash, touch potentials, and step potentials. I provide a clearer understanding of risk associated with lightning strikes by exploring the principle outlined in the IES IEC TR62713 standard, which address safety procedure for reducing risk outside a structure. So we will dwell into effective lightning protection measures today. Furthermore, this webinar aims to dispel any misconception and misunderstanding surrounding lightning and its associated hazards. By addressing common myth and clarifying important concepts, we can empower ourselves with accurate knowledge and make informed decisions when it comes to lightning protection. I encourage all participants, regardless of your background, our level of expertise to actively engage in this webinar, put your questions, uh, listen to the speaker, and make some notes. Whether you are a professional in the field of electrical engineering, a safety officer or a fire officer responsible for outdoor environment, this session will provide valuable insight that can be applied in various scenarios. So together, Let's delve into the world of lightning protection measures for outdoors as we strive to create safer environment and protect lives from the unpredictable forces of nature. So thank you. Let's begin our exploration of lightning protect protection measure. I now welcome our speaker, Mr. Gop Kumar. Thank Sir, you, Mr. Dominic. You, thank, thank you, Mr. Dominic. Thanks for the introduction. So as usual, I think we have uh, about 200 plus participants uh, or maybe 300 are going to participate today. So today we are going to discuss about one of the important uh, subjects of uh, lightning protection. Very important subject, uh, especially the monsoon is starting and uh, all of you know that uh, during these three, four, five months, uh, 
uh, last few years uh, we are uh, listening to accidents uh, death of farmers people those who are working in farms or outside building they are getting killed and sometime uh, a lot tens per day and uh, probably the annual some of the report says uh, more than thousands are getting killed every year due to lightning across india so the idea of the webinar is to explain you what exactly you should do or little bit uh, from the uh, standard the indian standard the bureau of indian standard had published uh, the standards iec 62 is iec 62305 part 1 to 4 which is talking about protection against lightning then 62561 is not an ia standard but it's an iec standard which is about the components of lightning protection system which is not at an ia standard but the next three iec 62713 62793 and 62858 these three are becoming an indian standard out of which uh, today's our discussion is about uh, or little bit connected to iec 62713 which is safety procedure for risk reduction outside the structure now before going into the subject uh, please understand that the uh, subject 62305 part 1 to 4 which we generally use for lightning protection of structures means a building a proper building 62305 has to be the principles of 62305 has to be applied to a proper building don't try to apply the same principles for in a farm in a in a open area this is first of all those principles are not applicable the 62305 is applicable for a proper structure because lightning is not only a current flow which we generally think the current or the energy consists of there is a heavy specific energy charges and the effect of lightning is not only a current flow it can heat material it can produce large flashovers temperature rise not only at the point of strike of the lightning uh, uh, if you have a loose contact almost 30000 degrees of temperature may be produced in a loose joint so lightning is not uh, like uh, the the other parts of other other uh, subjects of electrical engineering so lighting protection is a very special and very specific subject so let us look at uh, what exactly is iec or is iec 62713 which is yet to be published probably in a week or two this will be published he is talking about so during lightning the most important the subject is uh, don't try to be the tallest object uh, in the area if you are the tallest object in the area uh, the lightning probably is hitting the person and you know the effect the current flows through the person will create uh, big problems probably the person get killed so don't try to be the tallest uh, uh, part in the uh, of the installation or tallest part in the location the second effect is side flash if you are standing near to any objects maybe it is near to a building which is having a down conductor or maybe near to a tall tree or tall or small is immaterial if you are standing near to a tree the chances are as you can see in the picture side flash lightning may be hitting the tree and from the tree branches maybe the current jumps into the body of the person as a result uh, the person will be hurt so direct strike and side flash side flash means lightning is hitting something and from the uh, the, the the place where the lightning current is flowing there is a chance that current may jump into the body of the person for example instead of a tree you imagine a wooden pole so the wooden pole uh, there are some 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 propagandas going on in india you use a cycle tire and a wooden pole so if you have a 8 mm conductor connecting the cycle tire to the earth electrode and if the joints are not proper uh, the side flash will happen and if there is any bend in this 8 mm wire or if there is a bend in the down conductor side flash may happen so lightning is not like what you think it is a high frequency high energy current flow 
it is not like a, a dc current which is flowing through a conductor we have to treat it definitely different the third dangerous part is uh, don't stand under unearthed metallic roof you can find these wordings in the standard structures with metallic roof and non metallic supports what does this mean is if the support let us say the the the, the supporting is also a metal pipe then you are you are safe but if the supports are non metallic then the situation is dangerous the lightning may hit the sheet and probably from the sheet from the metal sheet the discharge may be happening to the person so this is dangerous also touch voltage imagine partial lightning current is flowing through some not the full lightning partial lightning current is flowing through some metallic objects uh, in a, even in a good building in a building with uh, protective equipotential bonding probably lightning current may be flowing through some of the metallic parts and if you are standing outside the building and touching one of these metallic parts there is a chance of touch voltage if you are standing inside a building and if you are in a reinforced uh, in a building with uh, with the uh, reinforcement the steel reinforcement then this chance is uh, nullified whereas if you are standing outside in any kind of building and touching the metallic part then this problem uh, is it, it exists so the touch voltage exist outside the building so i repeat if the if you are standing inside a building which is having steel reinforcement and the protective equipotential bonding as per ia 732 or national electrical code is made then inside the building this problem doesn't exist but outside the building touch voltage exists so it is due to you can see the metallics in metallic structure arcing resulting from induced voltages and touch voltages so the feet is at one voltage and the place where you are touching is at a different potential people get injured in this case the far other the biggest problem is step potential step potential means whenever there is a current flow through the soil through earth please note that lightning current flow is uh, people even scientists say it's a it's a surface uh, phenomena the current flow most probably it is going through the surface not deep into the earth so step voltages as you can see in the picture between the steps of a person a potential is uh, uh, due to the potential gradient there is a potential difference between the steps and the current may try to flow through the body which may injure the person so step voltages are highly dangerous now the standard has recommended how to get rid of this step voltage for example if you are near to a tree you have to be at least 10 meters away from the tree so that means in a tree up to 10 meters from the tree this the step voltages can injure person in a very good uh, lightning protected uh, structure probably it is 3 meters from the structure outside 3 meters is a danger zone i have the pictures i will show you so step voltage is the reason for death in most of the cases in case of lightning strike or during lightning strike please also note that step voltage is also applicable for extra high voltage uh, transmission or distribution substations extra high voltage so here you can see a, a typical picture of step voltage voltage gradient means the point of strike or point uh, uh, at which the current is entering the soil will have a very high potential with respect to a far away place and a person standing across this potential gradient will experience step voltage and the current will try to flow through the body which will injure the person so two examples are here the lightning is striking the tree and the, probably the person standing nearby is getting uh, uh, the touch or the step voltage so in uh, the uh, lightning protection standards we say it's an indirect impact similarly step voltage uh, sorry touch voltage touch voltage is nothing but uh, a person touching some metallic objects where full or partial lightning current is flowing and his feet is at a different potential as a result uh, uh, the person get, may get injured so the problem sir direct strike on the body of the person side flash of different kind for example side flash from a tree side flash from a building side flash from an unearthed metallic object 
then the problem is step voltage, then the problem is touch voltage. So all these problems, whenever there is an accident, we can analyze the reason why such kind of accidents are happening. With respect to step voltage, there are incidents which says thousands of gods or 300 plus gods or animals got killed in one incident. So uh, uh, such large animals, we must think that these are they are not standing in a small area. They are standing on a large area. Step voltage is even applicable for a large area. Probably uh, in the standards, uh, it is restricted to something about 10 meters. Anyhow, I have the picture. I will show you. The effect, possible injuries. The voltage can climb up to 300 kV between feet to head of the person. A person who is standing from the head to the foot up to 300 kV will be created. Once when the lightning current is flowing, not through the body of the person, but somewhere else nearby. And all these effects are illustrated and explained in the standard. Most often, the current flows through the surface, through the body, not internal through the body. But uh, of course, there will be uh, the effect also internal. The skin may uh, get uh, uh, burned. And all these explanations are there in the standard. Probably once when the standard is published, you can go through the standard and you can understand. A part of this presentation, the PPT of the presentation will be shared to you so that you can read the effect and try to understand the kind of problems. The kind of injuries are also explained in the standard. One of the problem which you must understand is you can see the picture of uh, 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 a lady sitting. She was wearing some uh, metallic uh, ornaments such as a necklace or some, some metal, uh, uh, the gold jewelry. So during lightning, what has happened is uh, the jewelry is exposed to a very high temperature because of some effect, which is also explained in the standard. As a result, the person get uh, burning on the skin. It's not a deep burning, but it's a surface burning. You can see the picture, the, the, the dress of the lady is a little bit dark. This is due to the ornaments or due to some metallic things which she was holding during the time of lightning. You can also find these uh, pictures uh, from various parts of the world, the current flow, which is burning the skin. Uh, technically, these people are not struck by the lightning. They are not touching anything. They are not uh, on the step voltage. They, are, they have some metal objects on their body, like ornaments on the body. And these metal objects are creating a high temperature, which is burning the skin. So this is also a problem which uh, we need to analyze and address properly. So if you are hurt badly, then the object, uh, you can be mildly injured or moderately injured or severely injured. The methods of safety measures and what you should do, how you should make the CPR are explained in the standard. Uh, the effect of mildly injured, moderately injured, and severely injured is also included in the standard. Most probably the standard will be coming within 10-15 uh, uh, days. So you can download the standard, you can buy the standard and go through it. So it will be very difficult to read through each and every part of uh, the explanation. So CPR may be required sometime. It may not be because if it is a severely injured case, then a CPR may not be possible because before that the person is dead. How to react during lightning? This explanations in the standard explains you detect a lightning strike. Uh, lightning detection on early warning systems are always available or it is already available in uh, India. There are several uh, agencies, those who are giving this uh, information, I think ISRO it is there, uh, the uh, IMD is having some uh, app or something like that. So you can register through these, uh, uh, these websites so that you get uh, a warning. Generally, you need to have a warning at least uh, 30 minutes in advance because this 30 minutes is required for you to move to a safe shelter. So if you are open outdoors, then uh, you are in trouble. The second method which we say is uh, watching the approaching cloud and uh, uh, listen to the sound. Then if the sound is, uh, you know, 
the 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 distance the time between the sound and the, you see the lightning and the sound divided by 3 you get the distance of the uh, lightning strike uh, that means you saw the uh, uh, the the light of the lightning at uh, zero then you start counting let us say at uh, uh, 15 once when you count uh, you hear the sound so that means the lightning strike is 15 divided by 3 about 5 kilometers away so what is recommended in the standard is from 5 kilometer and outdoor sports event should be interrupted if the lightning strike is close by nearby maybe closer to 5 kilometer then all the outdoor activities must be stopped and you should not go near to isolated trees because the lightning is going to strike in your area on the next moment then there is the 30 30 rule which is uh, which can be applied uh, if you are outdoor uh, i don't want to explain it we have uh, uh, it is there on the standard and we have it uh, in a book as well after once when the lightning uh, strike is over once when you, after listening to the last thunder uh, storm uh, sound you have to wait at least for 30 minutes and then only you are uh, uh, it is recommended to go out because most of the lightning casualties occur after the storm has passed or dissipated that means uh, after uh, uh, five minutes, if you go out, probably there is a strike which may be endangering the persons. So be careful. Lightning is not like uh, the normal electric shock where we can see from where the uh, electric shock you are getting. And if you try to not to touch that particular area, sometime you are safe. Lightning is not like that. So the unsafe areas uh, you can see in the picture. During 2007, we published the uh, a handbook on lightning what to do and what not to do i took these pictures from that particular book i i mean 2007 it's almost now 15 years back uh, the first book was published so you must avoid all outdoor activities and you have to be inside uh, a safe shelter safe shelter we will explain later also touching uh, in an unprotected building if you are touching some metallic objects of course you will be in trouble and if you are wearing something of course again you are in trouble safe shelters yes the cars or train or or metallic in sitting inside metallic uh, objects such as car bus are safe inside a building is safe uh, these we say as uh, lightning protected or safe places for lightning inside a building of course if the building is unprotected then you are not supposed to use electricity preferably then you are not use, supposed to use any of the activities which is shown in the picture but nowadays with the advancement in the technology you can uh, improve the the equipotential bonding in such a way that uh, uh, if all the safety measures electrical and electromagnetic safety measures are made in the building uh, actually you can use uh, these activities but still as a safety measure don't touch the metallic uh, objects this is as a precaution we say but the buildings can be made safe if you are near to taller structures especially light pole you are outside and you are near to a light pole the standard is recommending you can see here a 20 meter light pole 20 meter is a, a very high mast lighting uh, one meter you should uh, not keep closer to one meter you have to be one meter away from the away from the uh, structure the standard recommends one meter better it says better three meter one meter or better three meter so keep three meters away from any of these uh, light poles and other objects so practically if you are three meters away now in the picture you can see one meter away but imagine three meters away uh, so at some area you are protected from a direct lightning strike because strike will go to the metal pole rather than hitting the person but most important is you keep uh, this distance three meters and don't use umbrellas or hold any long metallic or other conducting objects in your hand because uh, if you hold an umbrella or if you hold some metallic objects there is a chance of current jumping from the uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, the the street light pole to that particular metallic object exist uh, as a result you will be get hurt 
if you are uh, near to a tree you can find this picture in the standard uh, you have to keep at least 10 meters away from the root of the tree the bottom of the tree and uh, from the branches minimum 10 meters because the lightning may be jumping up to five, 10 meters at the bottom the uh, step voltage may be hurting you if you are closer to the tree so minimum 10 meters away from the tree must be kept in one of the standard the american standard nfpa 780 annexure f is explaining about protecting the trees this is not from the indian standard this is from the american standard nfpa sorry nf is missing it is nfpa 780 annexure f explains uh, uh, protecting a tree please note that this recommendations in the standard is not to protect people it is to protect a tree because lightning may be hitting the tree and it may be damaging uh, the tree what is written trees with trunks within 3 meters 10 feet of a structure or within with branches that extended to extend to a height above the structure should be equipped with a lightning protection system because of danger of side flash fire or superheating of the moisture in the in the tree which could result in the splintering of the tree so this is to protect the tree it also the second para of the standard says adding protection to the tree is not for safety of people seeking shelter under the tree during thunderstorm possible side flashes step potential and touch potential could threaten the safety of people seeking shelter under the tree even if the trees are protected so please don't try to apply this principle to protect the people you can protect a tree by making a conductor through the tree of course every year you have to once when the tree grows you have to you have to uh, 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 modify the the connections modify it accordingly so this is a, a recommended method in F, nfpa 780 for protecting the tree if you have tall trees near to your house probably this is a good measure but not to protect people and please note that it is not included in the IEC standard or in the Indian standard. If you are outside a building, a well-protected building, if you are outside a well-protected building, there are two problems. One is the step potential and next one is the touch potential. In order to avoid touch potential, touch potential in the sense the down conductor is going through the building and if you are touching the down conductor or any earthed metallic object connected to the down conductor probably you are getting a shock in order to avoid that and to avoid the side flash you are supposed to be minimum three meters away from the down conductor you can see in this these wordings in the isic 62305 part uh, one uh, part three of course uh, in certain condition the vicinity of down conductors of an lps may be hazardous to life even if the lps has been designed and constructed according to the above mentioned requirement the hazard is produced to a tolerable level if one of the following condition is fulfilled under normal condition normal operation condition there are no persons within three meters from the down conductor so your building is well protected but from the down conductor chance of an accident to a person exist a person who is outside the building so you must keep three meters away from the down conductor a system of at least 10 down conductors is employed if the down conductor is more than 10 this chance of this uh, uh, the flashover is quite less that means if you have one or two down conductor the chance of uh, this uh, this side flash is much more then the contact resistance is also explained 100 kilo ohm the contact resistance between the person and the soil that means it is really an insulated floor if the floor is insulated then the chance is a little bit less similarly the uh, uh, step voltages are also uh, mentioned in the standard in order to avoid uh, uh, touch voltage and uh, in order to avoid touch voltage what you should do is the down conductor where I am moving the cursor, the down conductor of that part of the building up to let us say for example 2 meters, 3 meters down conductor where a person may be touching must be insulated. Insulation of exposed down conductors is provided giving a 100 kV 1.2 to 50 microseconds impulse withstand voltage example at least 3 millimeter cross-linked polyethylene. So if you are using a 3 millimeter 
XLP cable at the last three meters, which is tested for a 100 kV impulse voltage, then the problem of uh, touch voltage can be uh, uh, reduced. Then the second recommendation is a physical restriction or warning notice. So you put a barrier so that nobody goes near to the down conductor, which is unfortunately very difficult. Or you put a warning notice that people are not going near to the down conductor during this time. But the question is whether people will read it and uh, really understand and do it properly is a question. Regarding step voltage, equipotentialization by means of a meshed earth termination system will be helping physical restrictions. Physical restriction is uh, either you make a, a, a equipotential uh, meshed earth termination system, I have a picture I will show you in the next, or a restrict uh, so that people are not going near to the down conductor at least three meters. They have to keep three meters away from the down conductor or from the air thing. So basically, even in a well-protected building, you must keep at least three meters away from the down conductor, away from the earth termination, earth termination system in order to be safe. Now, how to make the meshed earth termination system? This picture you can find in the National Building Code of India. So here the dotted line shows a ring conductor, let's say for example, which is one meter away from the building and a half meter below soil, all around the building as a type B ring or thing. Then the ring is further extended. After three meters, there is one more ring, again three meters, one more ring, again three meters, one more ring. And each of these rings are again half meter below. The first one is 0 0.5 meter, next one is one meter, next one is 1.5 meter, like that. This is a a kind of a voltage grading. So by extending these rings, step voltages can be controlled. So people outside the building are safe in this particular case. Else, you can also make an RCC flooring outside the building and the RCC flooring and the down conductor can be connected together. As a result, you can make an equipotential bonding also. So to protect people outside the building, this is required. Don't think that uh, you have uh, an air terminal, you have a down conductor and you have uh, one earth electrode and then the rest is safe. No, it is not like that. You have to keep the distances or you have to put the appropriate measures in order to protect people, those who are outside the building. Now I am going to show uh, uh, the photographs of uh, one of the lightning protection system installed very recently, which was uh, propagated, which was uh, written or spoken by the media or by the newspaper agencies uh, in the eastern part of India. This is a school in Orissa. You can find out uh, a early streamer emission, which we say a non-standard lightning protection air termination system installed in the school with uh, a down conductor. Now the down conductor, there are two rods uh, at the top of, there is an ESE rod as well as there is a normal uh, uh, Franklin rod. Then both are connected to through two down conductors. Uh, you see, very important subject of lightning protection is down conductors must be all around the building. If you are routing all the down conductors through one side of the building, that itself is a violation of the standard. And uh, depending upon the size of the building, you need to have multiple down conductors. It is not like the whole lightning, the entire lightning current is flowing through one down conductor, which is again danger because if the whole lightning current is flowing through one down conductor, if you zoom this particular picture, the third line from top to bottom, also the horizontal line uh, uh, in the building is nothing but the, uh, these are nothing but the, the you can, I'm just zooming the picture. These are the electrical, one is from top to bottom. The third is a conduit through which the electrical wire is running. And the horizontal one is also electrical wiring. In practical, what will happen is if there is a lightning strike in this building, the down conductor is carrying enormous amount of current and the, the vertical pipe and the electrical installation the vertical pipe which is going from top to bottom of the building. There are two down conductors and one uh, electrical wiring. This electrical wire and the wiring and the connected equipment will disappear immediately. Disappear in the sense it is completely going to burn. 
it will create a burning of the rooftop solar pv system also it is uh, going to burn all the electrical items which is connected on the other side of this uh, particular line so basically you have to have a lot of down conductors number of down conductors depending upon the size of the building throughout the building the idea is lightning current is separated to several path or diverted through several path as a result uh, the amount of current flow through each of the down conductor is reduced to a lower level and its effects are thus reduced so one down conductor like this particular installation is really 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 dangerous so even the standard says you can go three you have to keep only 3 meters away from a down conductor please note that that is applicable to a building where a lightning protection as per 62305 is installed whereas in this particular building lightning protection system as per a story is installed not as per a standard but as per a story is installed one down conductor here probably you should keep 10 meters away as like the tree the 10 meters you must keep 10 meters away from this particular conductor otherwise it is going to create a, a real hazard then the down conductors are connected to an earth electrode as you can see here there is a, a pipe or a plate or something like that most probably a pipe each of the down conductor is connected to uh, two uh, rod one down conductor connected to one rod this is also an illogical and this is also a non standard installation uh, i would recommend uh, children please don't go near to this particular installation you must keep at least 10 meters away from this uh, particular uh, place if in during a lightning strike if you are going near to this installation during lightning strike then uh, uh, you can be uh, hit or hurt by lightning so please keep at least 10 meters away from this particular installation i also request the participants please note that uh, such dangerous installations shall not be done in a school small children are going to play sometime in this area and no one can control children and tell them you have to be inside the building this is the the uh, uh, the boys hostel in a school imagine during uh, the afternoon if uh, on a sunday no teachers are there if children are playing nearby outside this area near to this down conductor and there is a lightning then you are they are in deep trouble so such installations shall not be made this is completely a violation of the standards not only the the violation is not only on the down conductor and the air thing the violation is also on the air termination system one of our volunteer a volunteer from nfe went to this particular school and he had as uh, he had a talk with some of the villagers and the villagers of of the impression that this rod where i am moving the cursor is going to protect uh, not only the school building but about 117 meters uh, all around the school so this rod is uh, installed and a story has been given to the villagers that you and the whole area is protected which is also a non standard installation or a non standard theory once when we talk about non standard theory there are three type of non standard uh, lightning protection systems uh, sold in the market the first one is called as early streamer emission it says one rod protect up to 100 or one rod catches lightning up to 100 meters and this can protect a building up to 100 meters so you protect uh, yourself and all your neighbors by this particular rod this is the claim which we say as non standard the second theory says uh, 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 you know the first theory is like an umbrella the second th theory is like an umbrella but a reverse umbrella so it is collecting all the lightning up to 100 meters this is also a non standard theory and the third is called as lightning dissipating system so this lightning dissipating system says once when a lightning reaches your building after seeing this special rod uh, i will zoom it here you see this picture so the lightning is starting and there is a special rod uh, special installation at the roof of your building after seeing this special rod the lightning will go to your neighbor's building so these three we call as non standard system in this non standard system sometime people are getting attracted towards the theory of early streamer emission device uh, which uh, the manufacturers or the suppliers claim as uh, 
advanced technology modern technology and sometimes simple technology less maintenance all the 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 modern words are used digital technology iot based lightning protection then uh, 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 probably artificial ai uh, early streamer emission all these uh, attractive words are used advanced modern uh, then uh, digital uh, ese then uh, uh, iot based uh, ese and all these names are given as a result of this uh, name as well as the marketing the story which they explain people are getting attracted towards this so they say it one rod protects 100 plus meters and uh, then there is a counter which you can count the number of strikes so most of the time engineers are not uh, attracted towards the first three points but uh, once when the manufacturer says this is as per the french code nfc 17102 then people are getting uh, attracted so the french code has accepted this particular claim and they have made a standard with a picture you can google the standard nfc 17102 you can download the standard please download the standard read the standard and understand this particular picture the french code says the nfc standard 17102 the lightning protection consists of serial numbers 1 to 18 it consists of one air terminal which is nothing but the serial number 1 and ese rod then connection components outdoor down conductor several down conductors and you see lot of equipotential bonding and so on so the french standard says uh, this is how you should make a lightning protection system and the indian standard says this is how you should make a lightning protection system but the serial number 1 is not required the serial number 1 is about uh, early streamer emission where a serial number 2 to 18 is the actual safety measures the indian standard says you don't need a serial number 1 whereas the french standard says you need 1 to 18 now the fantastic part is the suppliers when it comes to india they don't talk about how to install and maintain it they say one rod attracting 107 meters and it protects a large area which is as per the french standard this is a wrong idea even the french standard doesn't say that one rod attracting 107 meters and passing the current through one down conductor and one earth electrode even the french standard does not talk about it whereas the manufacturers the suppliers in india always explain in this fashion one rod one down conductor and one earth electrode which is wrong as per the french code so this picture you can find in the french code which consists of a proper equipotential bonding so and several down conductors now please note that lightning protection is not about a rod or conducting the current through one conductor and sending it to soil the we are talking about a very high current flow through a very small duration the current is going to jump to all the nearby metallic objects it is going to get coupled to the metallic installation so we have to have a very good equipotential bonding as well once when it talks to this non standard lightning protection called as early streamer emission sold in india for example solar pv installations almost 99.9% of solar pv installations are made with early streamer emission device i will show you how this becomes illegal in india in a later uh, slide so the theory of this uh, protection these manufacturers say or the the, the they say a normal rod is able to emit a streamer of let us say x distance the early streamer emission de- device is faster it is more capable and it is able to emit a streamer of a higher distance so based on this theory which is never accepted anywhere in the world because the ec vendors could not show it practically to anybody only in their closed laboratories they test and they claim this particular figures but it is never it is several locations it is proven that or proved that the claims are totally wrong so they say there is a delta t time advancement then there is a there is a complicated calculation and based on the calculation they say since my rod is faster uh, i can protect uh, 108 meters or 102 meters but when it comes to india earlier days uh, there were some uh, trainings going on 
2018-2020, the the video probably the link I will post in the in the uh, chat box. You can see the link. Uh, earlier days, uh, the claim was each of these ESC rod is protecting up to 2.4 uh, kilometers. So 10 rods probably is going to protect the entire village or entire town. So such illogical and uh, unrealistic claims were made in India for a long time. Now, what is written in the National Building Code of India. National Building Code of India is not a legal document. It is a voluntary recommendation, for example. The authority, those who are going to accept NEC, for example, the fire departments had accepted National Building Code as a legal document. So now any kind of ESC, ESC, CSC and the dissipation system, these three items are shall not be used as per National Building Code. There was a court case and finally the court told uh, the National Building Code is only a recommendation. The authority, those who are implementing the act or the rule must ensure whatever required. Now, if you look at the Electricity Act and the Central Electricity Authority measures relating to supply uh, and uh, you see the regulations, our the National Electrical Safety Regulation 2010, Chapter 3. He is talking about the general safety requirement, the chapter, the, the regulation number 12, general safety requirement pertaining to construction, installation, protection, operation, and maintenance of electric supply lines and apparatus. The sub regulation number three says the material and apparatus used shall conform to the relevant specification of the Bureau of Indian Standards or International Electrotechnical Commission, Commission where such specifications have already been laid down. So the regulation is very clear. It says, Whatever the materials which you use in a building for making an electrical safe building, you must, the, the, all the devices must to be as per the IS standards. And in the IS standard, especially the National Building Code, it is very clearly written that these non-standard devices shall not be used. So legally, using these non-standard devices, is there is no legal protection. It is actually illegal. Now, this ESC rod, please note that, as I said, the IEC 62305 or NFC, these are applicable for a properly constructed building or a structure. It is not applicable for an open area. Now, by taking this theory from the manufacturer, from the suppliers, it is applied all over India and thousands of such ESE rods are installed across India. In the farmland, you can see in the picture, there is an ESE rod which is installed in an open area in a metal pipe. And they say it protects uh, sometime 2.4 kilometers, some, some places they say. Earlier it was 2.4, then it is reduced to one square kilometer. And nowadays I think the claim is only about 100 or 110 meters. So all these claims are illogical it is not going to work so and uh, even if you read the nfc standard uh, the the protected volume in this nfc standard depending upon the level of protection the rod it is sometime only 20 meters 30 meters even if you apply the formula anyway those formulas are also not applicable not explained or accepted in anywhere if a tree grows above the height of this ESC rod, then the climbs are totally wrong because the lightning will go to the tree. Imagine there is a, in 2020, you put this kind of a rod, which is probably 50, 75,000 or even a lakh of rupees. And after uh, one year, a nearby tree is taller than this particular rod, then the claim itself is wrong as per the standard. However, the claim in the standard itself is wrong. That is the point. When it comes to the education of uh, lightning protection in India, you can find a lot of uh, funny uh, non-scientific claims uh, in uh, uh, with respect to lightning. Uh, it was claimed that uh, there are different lightning strikes like uh, hill lightning, jungle lightning, river-based lightning, coastal lightning, urban and semi-urban lightning. These are different. There are different different types of uh, lightning. This is what is claimed. Uh, by the experts uh, uh, in India. This is absolutely wrong. And uh, some places they educate that it has got uh, uh, low frequency uh, sound, uh, 1 to 30 megahertz sound, which we 
normally listen this is uh, nobody knows what is this 30 megahertz we read uh, in school uh, that engineers know that the sound frequency is quite lesser than 30 megahertz then uh, there are the the i am talking about the wrong training please note that uh, this is the slide is explaining wrong methods not the correct methods wrong methods so people are also educated as there are vertical strike and lateral strike uh, in farmland, people are affected due to lateral strike. Please note that it is due to step potential, not lateral strike. There was a propaganda during 2016-2017. The propaganda was you plant tall trees all around the building or plant tall trees as a result of the tree. Lightning is dissipated by the tall tree. And uh, one funny moment is, I think in 2018, the Bangladesh government started a project to plant palm trees to protect people. After three, four years, they realized that the palm trees are taking more time to grow. So they abandoned the project. The minister, one of the minister has made a press statement and you can, it is provided in our blog. The minister says, since the trees are taking so much time, the idea of protecting people by uh, uh, planting tall trees is not working out well, so we are abandoning the, uh, uh, the the project. But that project itself is a, a, a big dangerous idea, planting tall trees and protecting from lightning. Then uh, we were also taught that uh, if you, in your building, if you have a compound wall, then lightning is completely protected. You, you know, within the, the, the lightning will not jump out of the compound wall. People think that, uh, or the Indian scientists uh, think that uh, Lightning is like a thief. He will not jump out of the compound wall and don't go out. So all such uh, uh, unscientific and uh, wrong and dangerous methods are being uh, uh, propagated or educated in the schools and uh, colleges and communities uh, uh, around uh, India, especially in northern part and the eastern part of India. Please don't believe all such things. It is also educated, a wrong education saying that uh, lightning conductor, it will conduct a negative lightning strike and there is lightning arrester which will protect a large area and this lightning arrester, positive lightning strike is dissipated, lightning negative strike is attracted and all these non-standard things are being uh, educated and the, these, these, uh, the, the non-standard education also try to claim that uh, these lightning arresters, which you are seeing, the ESE rod is installed in Parliament of India, Kuttap Minar of India. So this is a sign of acceptance of this technology in such large buildings. Please note that lightning is, uh, uh, is not a daily phenomena. If lightning is not going to hit Parliament of India for the next 20 years, yes, it won't hit. That's it. So it doesn't mean that this ESE rod is protecting the Parliament of India for the next 20 years. So also the, the, the manufacturers were claiming that in, in one of these scientists, Indian scientists worked in Switzerland and he used the cow dung for attracting or sending the lightning current to earth. So really the situation is really pathetic. Uh, it is uh, not uh, good uh, to follow such uh, non-scientific methods. You please download or get the Indian standard, read the Indian standard properly. The standards are made uh, uh, these standards are used globally. Lightning is same all over the world. Probably only the amount of current is lesser or uh, uh, here and there it may be different. But that is with respect to standard. It is immaterial because all the side effect or effect, direct or indirect effect of lightning is already included in the standard. So you can blindly follow the standard. These are made after research by hundreds and thousands of universities and uh, experts around the globe. It is not like somebody sitting in India making a standard and asking all the people to follow. So also this is a, a, a wrong training. I have put special training, not uh, special training. This is a wrong training. They say lightning arresters and devices which, are, which arrest lightning before it is formed and hence there is no sound and lightning. This was one of the claim. I don't know what kind of lightning arrester it is. They say it is, it is, it is the, after installing this special device, there is no sound and light. So no lightning.
so there are uh, cities and towns and uh, places which is completely protected the babadam babadam and some these places airports are safe grid that means the entire area is protected so if a lightning protection uh, uh, an expert listen to the trainings uh, which is happening in india then only you will realize the dangers behind it one of the dangerous method which is explained during this training is using a cycle tire on a wooden pole fit, fitted on a wooden pole and claiming that this will protect uh, the the for example this school building also it protects uh, it is claimed that it protect uh, these people those who are behind but please note that this is impossible you must be at least 10 meters away from this particular cycle rim if you are 10 meters away from the cycle rim then you the, the even if there is a lightning strike on the cycle rim step potential effect will be almost 10 meters so people those who are uh, thinking that this is uh, making people safe and if you go behind or below this particular cycle tire people will be hurt due to step potential due to touch potential 3 meters is the distance uh, even if you have a good installation you have to have be 3 meters away from the installation that is what is explained in the standard if it is a, a unsafe uh, device or a tree you must be 10 meters away so look non standard and unheard uh, uh, systems are used uh, in order to protect people in india bicycle tire and cycle rim the funny part is uh, uh, during 2018 uh, it was only claimed as a bicycle tire but uh, once when we published uh, uh, an article and told them that there should be a down conductor then the claim is changed as okay now the cycle tire is connected to the earth electrode through an 8 mm wire but please note that it won't work in the sense first is imagine even if the lightning is hitting this cycle tire lightning current once when it flows it produces enormous amount of mechanical force even if you have an 8 mm down conductor hanging from the uh, 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 the cycle tire this wire will disappear and it creates a flash over all around the area you cannot do like this what about the touch potentials what about step potentials so this is in fact highly dangerous and it was claimed that uh, tens of thousands of these uh, non standard uh, things are installed uh, to protect uh, school children to protect uh, hospitals and so on recently we saw another uh, method which is claimed to be an alternate and as per isic 62305 the claim is as per isic 62305 which is also not correct uh, this is you see a metal pole instead of a cycle tire and a wooden pole there is is a metal pipe 13 meters long metal pipe and uh, connected to two earth electrodes as you can see here and the claim is it protects uh, a 45 degrees shadow area but please understand that the standard recommends you have to, if you are earthing if you are in a poor installation you have to be 10 meters away from the conductor so if you are moving 10 meters away if you go to the corner and if you make a 45 degree angle a person who is standing at the the last 1.5 meter is not protected because lightning may be hitting his head you are exposed so if you make this kind of an installation actually you get this is the entire area let us say 45 degree which is claimed to be protected area so 10 meter the red dot is the metal pipe 10 meters from the metal pipe is unprotected you will have uh, touch and step potentials at the finally the area which you are going to get in order to protect people is the green circle if you are going to the red area that means closer to the pipe you will get hurt due to touch and step potentials the orange area you may be exposed because you are taller than the uh, the protection angle you may be getting hurt so the green area is the only protected place and you cannot really make a boundary like this green area and tell people that during lightning all of you go march to this green area and stand in this particular area in order to protect this is impossible so basically this idea of making a metal pipe and connecting it to two earth electrode and claiming that this is as per the indian standard is wrong indian standard don't talk in this fashion even if we 
think that the there is a very good earth electrode and the distance from the pipe is not like uh, 10 meters let us say 1 to 3 meters even then the actual place where you are getting is quite less it is not like the entire 45 degree shadow area is protected so please understand such dangers and uh, uh, educate the people properly so that they are not fooled because of uh, uh, this foolish education happening in India. Similarly, it was claimed that uh, the cyclone shelters, hundreds of cyclone shelters uh, across India are protected with lightning protection. So you can find this report in one of our blog. This is how the cyclone shelter looks like and there is an entirely uh, isolated lightning protection which is practically required for an explosive area like an oil tank so a lightning protection which is which has to be implemented for an explosive area is being installed in this building which is a, a cyclone shelter come go down and after two years you can see that this whole thing is totally damaged and this project for example protecting this building it is worth the, probably the lightning protection alone is worth the, uh, uh, probably 40 50 lakh rupees because these are special wires high voltage insulated conductors and these conductors has to be fixed to the wall of the building at every half meter whereas the wires are completely hanging if the lightning is hitting uh, due to mechanical forces all these installation will be thrown away it is not going to exist now protecting people inside this shelter this shelter is an RCC building. It's a properly constructed RCC building. You don't need to have lightning protection for this building to protect people. If you wanted to protect the structure, you need to have a lightning protection system. If you wanted to protect people, simply ask the people to go inside the building, let them sit inside the building, don't go near to windows and don't touch electrical items. That is the safest way. So people inside the shelter, if they are away from the windows and doors and if they are away from the electrical installation, then they are safe. You don't need this lightning protection system for this cyclone shelter. Whereas tens of crores of rupees has been, our money, the, the tax money has been wasted for such installations, claiming that uh, these are high technology protection system. So people inside RCC are protected. It was also claimed that uh, lightning protection people, the, 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 the risk assessment and risk management, uh, there is a claim going on in the, in the media which says that uh, risk assessment as per the Indian standard is wrong because uh, sometimes the, the people, those who are talking, they don't understand what is uh, the difference between risk assessment and risk management. What is explained in the standard is risk assessment of a building, not an open area. It is not applicable for open area. It is not applicable for a traveling vehicle, a vehicle which is moving. It is applicable for a fixed structure. Now for that, how to make a risk assessment? Risk assessment is nothing but uh, finally you sometime require, the finally there are three questions, LPS, lightning protection system, whether you need or not. So risk assessment is to find out whether you are building require lightning protection or not. Risk assessment is, for example, in the previous slide, you have seen the cyclone shelter. If you make a risk assessment, probably this building, that particular cyclone shelter, doesn't need any lightning protection because the building is already protected by the steel structure. Now, if you require lightning protection, lightning protection is divided into four levels, LPL 1, 2, 3, 4. The whole story of risk assessment by the way of calculation by the number of thunderstorm days, size of building, type of service, number of people, criticality in case of failure. And finally, on one side, we are finding out how much, how much money or how much economics is involved in case of a lightning strike and its related failure. On the other side, how much money you are going to spend to protect a building. And at the middle, you have the tolerable risk. The idea is. 1 out of 10 to the power 5, that means about 1 lakh strike must be protected for human. Say, for example, out of 1 lakh lightning strike, only 1 lightning strike shall be harmful to a person. Similarly, for electronics, 
10 to the power of 3. That means out of 1000 strikes, one lightning strike can be harmful to electronics. So these are the tolerable risks. Always the risk assessment is to ensure that the building, the tolerable risk, the whatever we are by installing lightning protection, the tolerable risk is reduced to less than this particular level. The risk is reduced to less than tolerable limit. So people should understand that uh, the standard is not talking about risk management. Risk management and risk assessment is two different uh, subjects. What is written in the standard is risk assessment. It is through calculations, just find out whether your building need a protection or not. It is not applicable for open areas. It is not applicable for non-standard constructions. If you wanted to protect people outside the building, the only way, the best way is to put a metallic container and the people probably inside the metallic conductor container, but uh, it is not practical. It is and very expensive. One of the methods which can be thought of is instead of a metallic container, you can make a metal shed with metal supports and this red color is nothing but several ring conductors outside the building, inside the building in order to make a, a proper earth potential uniform. So this may be a solution. It is not scientifically, if required through softwares, we can analyze, we can simulate and we can test whether this will work or not, if there is a demand. But uh, this can be a practical solution, a metal shed with the metal supports, that means the roof is properly grounded. Then the on the earth, all the metal poles are interconnected to a kind of a grid all around the area, inside and outside the building, so that potential equalization is also made. So if you wanted to protect a uh, uh, thatched roof, then the only way is you have to make a ring or thing. Also, please note that if you wanted to protect any place against a step potential, the idea is to make a ring, ring conductor all around the area, including the potential equalization, like extending the ring, which I have shown in one of the picture. Let me show that picture again. So even in a well-protected building, by extending the ring, you can make equipotentialization so that people outside the building are safe a similar arrangement may be made to protect people outside this particular shelter schools be very careful to protect people outside schools and hospitals it is not the strike which is killing it is the step and touch potential and flashovers equally they are also equally dangerous the area preferably wherever people are standing that area we are supposed to make additional ring conductors and make the area equipotential plane and the equipotential plane must be connected to the air termination at several intervals depending upon the standard for example level 1 10 meters level 4 20 meters so and you have to make a proper protection for uh, these kind of buildings it is not like place a uh, a, a wooden pole and uh, a cycle tire and claiming that the whole area is protected or people are protected which is really dangerous. You have to make a proper lightning protection system. Similarly, protection, protecting the thatched roof. So the main subject is it is not a, 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 an earth electrode, but a ring conductor all around the building. So with this, I would like to stop the presentation. I hope uh, the information which was given is useful. Now uh, we are ready for the question answer. I am sorry that my camera is not working. So even if I switch on the camera, uh, I am not visible. Sorry for that. Over to you, Mr. Dominic. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, very, very, very insightful information that you shared. I, we have almost over 25 questions. And uh, if somebody has observed uh, your uh, presentation carefully, so the answer were there. However, I'll just pick up a few questions. Uh, first question was uh, from uh, Prince Kumar. How to reduce step and touch voltage? What is the precaution to get rid of this hazard? I know that you answered, but quicker if we can just put it on sentence. 
yes uh, in a well protected building step and touch potential keep away from uh, the 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 building uh, three not the building the down conductors or the earthed uh, metallic parts i explained it very well 3 meters away and you have to make a, a, a ring as i shown in the picture so amit mittal is asking can we identify the strike of a, a strike a site of strike in advance oh impossible the area can be not the site of strike is not possible okay badresh is a consultant from bangalore uh, he is asking when eco potential earthing is deployed m strip are used in column but if you use structural steel itself will there be a break due to lapping coupling etc with flash and touch potential so ss good method or no uh, we have to make uh, if you are if you are making use of the structural steel we have to make the bonding in such a way that from top to bottom the resistance is reduced to less than 0.2 ohm you can put an additional conductor maybe an ms conductor a continuous conductor and make a, a bonding with the entire steel as a result the continuity resistance is reduced so there are techniques uh rajendra m panchal is asking what is the difference between uh, touch voltage and step voltage during the lightning oh mr rajendra panchal he was the gentleman who was coming to who has attended our bangalore program hyderabad program mumbai program and ahmedabad program uh, okay. mr rajendra we explained about the touch and step potential very clearly so the voltage between the steps is step potential voltage between the place where you are touch uh, where you are touching and where you are standing is step potential good uh, amit mittal is asking what is the applicable standard in india for lightning arrester and surge protector IS IEC 62305 for a well protected for a well constructed building or a structure 62305 there are four parts part 1 to 4 okay badresh again is asking if there is no down conductor that is structural steel itself acts as a down conductor will this be a successful as it saves cost to builder but will structure team will be able to do Uh, it will be dangerous because once when if you if the idea is to use the structural steel uh, we really don't know the condition of the structural steel this may lead to some other problem uh, but uh, what is recommended in the standard is if you are going to have a new building you construct the building in a proper way recommended way in the standard as a result uh, you take care of such uh, flash overs structural engineers are now accepting it now for your information the distance 3 uh, meters uh, Uh, uh yeah from the down conductor of course uh, if you are this is applicable for uh, if you go for an exposed lightning protection that means an external lightning protection that's yeah padresh has space. been uh, designing lot of tall buildings in bangalore and is from satwa so i'm sure this very relevant question that he's asking to apply into his building that is designing okay moving to kalyan sharma sir down conductor should be isolated from building or structure depending upon the height of the structure the calculation is provided the separation distance calculation is provided in the in the standard uh, it has to be physically away from the building or from the structure from the metallic parts of the structure or from the structure and building are the same okay uh, prem kumar can electrical earthing is uh, can electrical earthing and lps have a common earthing system of course yes the down conductor and the met must be bonded and the spds has to be installed on the main uh, incoming panel then only lightning protection is complete if this is not carried out you cannot claim your lightning protection is complete vijay kumar adu lightning conductor are touching the walls will wall get damaged uh if it is properly bonded then no if there is a loose contact in the down conductor then yes okay. uh, actually uh, mr rathik uh, instead of going through each question there are several some silly questions we can find out some serious question and uh, okay i'll uh, this information presentation and all that mm, i think you you should pick it up because ram kevel uh 
exactly we'll have that's what is asking ppt probably yeah. if possible uh, i have shared the ppt probably we can share the ppt yeah ppt will be shared to all the participants who has been there we will be sending probably on monday or tuesday so ram cable is asking something about ie uh, es lps so i'll just read out if this is okay interesting the existing building have got esc lps dot uh, lps going forward for replacing these esc and with lps comp um, uh, complying with is 62305 is not acceptable by the architect as many down com uh, down conductors coming down uh, spoiling the look of a building please advise what to do in old and existing building where esc is installed or only a terminal is installed uh, actually today's program we are trying to explain about protecting people outside the building we can restrict the questions which is related to protecting people outside the building because we are also coming out with the, the version the next uh, uh, part 2 and part 3 of the same webinar where we will explain more about uh, lightning protection of building and structures so probably uh, regarding this one if the architect is not allowing to use lightning protection as per iec 62305 then the label for your building is uh, your building is unprotected that's it if you wanted to protect then you should make it as per iec 62305 yeah what i see in this question uh, mr gopakumar is more related to building not related to outside the structure uh to protect the human so i think as mr gopakumar saying our next uh second series of uh, lightning protection uh will be on structure or a building i think there are lot many questions related to a uh, building so i will uh, go to arish magu legal requirement in parks and play, uh, places which are frequently visited by common people are not followed adequately and complaints are also not heard properly as multi agency are involved what should be done for effective implementation of safe condition legal requirement parks and places are frequently okay now you see parks and places uh, where people are frequently visiting the only way is uh, danger boards and uh, there should be some shelter where people can take shelter during uh, thunderstorm time but unfortunately most of the places uh, it is not there somebody asked a question who is any authority promoting substandard uh, systems so i will just mm. post a, a, a video in the link one moment let me just uh, take it out so i am i am posting a link of a youtube video where you can find out uh, who is the agency promoting this uh, non standard uh, lightning protection system in india one moment let me share it in the chat box so i am putting a, a youtube link you can click the link and find out who has uh, who is educating Uh, this non standard it is unfortunately by some of the government agencies that is the sad part <laughs> so uh, uh, mr dominic i am just going through the next questions is any specific okay. education board which specifies class books and saying the subjects no unfortunately there is no mr amit uh, 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 we are trying to create uh, our old handbook uh, which will be uh, redrafted for uh, suiting to school children initially we had uh, we have published a book long back i will just share you the 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 book uh, just a moment so this is uh, this is our our book one moment i am sure you are able to see the screen yeah so we published this particular book uh, in 2007 this is to this is to protect uh, you no know, to give some ideas now we are trying to make this book uh, the next edition this book was uh, in fact very much useful at that point of time but lot of new information said come we will update the book and we will republish it for school children so this discussions are going on thank you very much for the question 
So Vijay Kumar Ayadav is asking, during lighting, if there is no safe area, can person lay lay down horizontally to ground in open area? No. No. Sir, there are some uh, people, those who have raised the hand. Can we have a few questions from the people so that by the time we can also, I can also select a few questions. Yeah, I will, uh, th those who have raised the hand, I will ask you to, Palani Swami, uh, I will allow you to talk uh, uh, if you are okay. Then I will, uh, I think I need to be host, uh, you have to make me host Lakshmi. Uh, then I can probably allow them to make. Lakshmi, are you there? Lakshmi? Yes, sir. I made you as a host, sir. Okay. Uh, allow to talk. Palani Sami, you can uh, speak if you are there. Or no, Sadiq Kosh. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Palani Sami. Okay. Yeah, Rob, one once again. And say, I don't have any question now. Just you can give an option to others. Thanks. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pauline Sami. I will uh, uh, remove the permission to talk. Uh, Sadiq Pasha, do you have any question? Yes, yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. So I am working as a safety officer in the construction industry okay. where we are constructing larger buildings. In that case, the people are doing reinforcement work, sir. So mm -hmm. that time, how we can protect them? We are working on seventh or eighth floor, sir. So there is a huge reinforcement area. That time, what is the possibilities to give the lighting, uh, temporary lighting arrangement system? And we are working with the tower cranes also, which has have a 60 meter height. Sir. So normally, the if the, since the tower crane is much taller, technically the the lightning may be hitting the tower crane. But again, if the arm is, uh, it, it depends uh, how, where the arm is, so that uh, the whether uh, we have to really find out whether people are protected or not. In most of uh, these uh, sites, uh, the construction rebars are much taller than the people, those who are uh, standing on the area. As a result, uh, uh, the lightning intent, maybe it is hitting this particular, uh, the rebars. There are sites where additional rods are also kept and connected to the rebar in order to make the rebar taller than the people, those who are working on the area. Such simple techniques can help, provided the structure is constructed to handle the lightning strike. Yes. So, Thank can you. we go to the next question? Yeah. Uh, questions here. Uh, Mohan is asking, what is the method of LPN metro segment erection, sir? I think this is again more related to building. We will touch upon this in our next edition. Next edition. So, I'm looking at uh, uh, where to, related to today's uh, question. How can we protect uh, old trees in resort from lighting protection? Few precious trees are lost already. Akhtar Ansari is asking. Yes, I have replied. Uh, there was a slide, the NFPA 780 Anaksher F. Uh, so I have shown the picture. Probably the question is asked before seeing the picture. I think we should uh, in, in, um, suggest all our uh, participants to post uh, the question after completing the, you know, the presentation because in many occasions, most of the answers are uh, answered through various slides. It would be meaningful for people to post the question after uh, understanding or going through the presentation. Uh, do you want me to allow uh, Mohan to speak? Yes, yes, please. You can allow one by one. Yeah. Mohan, uh, can you? Yeah. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go yeah. Ahead. Very good afternoon and uh, very thanks for uh, Mr. Gopakumar and Mr. Dominic for the excellent uh, presentation. I am the member. I am basically an electrical engineer and uh, HSE safety professional, having 42 years experience in industry. My question is uh, that we are working in metro elevator segment erection, during which the launching girder, people are standing on the launching girder uh, and doing the erection work. At the time, if the lightning, what is the method, best method for uh, protecting them? They are not standing on the ground. They are standing on the launching 
and that steel structure itself during the segment erection sir very simple your structure must be uh, now the, the recommended method of lightning protection is use the structure as your down conductor and ear thing so if your construction is complying to this okay. you ensure that uh, something is properly installed so that uh, uh, the person is uh, the, the is not the highest point at that particular area but this can protect from the strike but the sound and uh, light there is no protection okay sound and light is also sometimes dangerous i already answered to another gentleman about this hope that is clear yeah so uh, you, yeah normal uh, the best method will do. the best and the recommended method is stop your activities during this time go indoors that okay. is the best and the recommended so uh, no doubt thank you thank you mohan sir thank, thank you, sir. you uh, let me go to prem uh, prem kumar i am allowing to speak uh, you can uh, allow to uh, yeah prem kumar if you are there you can uh, go ahead and talk okay i'll i'll take um, i think uh, most of the questions again with uh, earth electrode uh, more related to our uh, building structure and all yes i have gone through all all, all questions we, we have another 30 questions but all the questions are related to building uh, yeah. so uh -huh. gentlemen if we our today's topic is protecting people outside the building okay uh, uh, sri krishna uh, sri krishna uh, if you, sri krishna Sri Kishan, yeah. Sri Kishan, if you are uh, uh, want to speak, you can uh, go ahead speak. But uh, let the question be related to the today's uh, topic. Okay, I'll move on to John. Uh, John, you you can go ahead and talk. This also regarding so the building, high rise building. Okay. Uh, uh, the high-rise building with around uh, uh, 400 meters high with uh, network protection and uh, uh, with lighting uh, arresters. What we have to do for this uh, to avoid the side flashing and also this building among the uh, concrete forest, one of the building among the high-rise buildings. The protection for the side flashing. What do you mean by lightning grid? Uh, the network, the net network of, uh, uh, with respect to IC62305, 5x5 five, five uh, uh, strip networks. At the top on of the, the building. And the uh, rooftop. And rebars, okay. two rebars with the 20 mm dia considered as the down conductors, and it is connected to the uh, uh, this one. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, the base uh, to the building base. Yeah, actually, this is, uh, I would say, dangerous because the lightning protection standard is recommending to use a down conductor with a smooth surface. If you are using rebars, the surface is not uh, smooth. It's a rubbed, ribbed surface. You yes. can find uh, this in uh, ISIC 62305 part 3. Uh, if you have the part 3, you just open the standard and you uh, search uh, ribbed, R-I-B-B-E-D. I will just show, show you. What is written? Yeah. Uh, I will also share my screen. One moment, please. So I'm sure you are able to see this. Uh, yes. Okay. You see? Yeah. In order to avoid confusion between different type of steel rods in concrete, it is recommended that round steel rod of at least 8 mm diameter with a smooth surface with a smooth surface to be used as additional down conductor in contrast to the ordinary dribbed surface of the reinforcing rod. So since you are using the reinforcing rod, which is not a smooth surface, I really don't know whether it is safe or not. So according to me, it is not 
you are not following the recommendation of the standard so i would say it's danger but this is the uh, this is the recommendations by the specialist with uh, are recommending here i don't know i am i am i am from uh, one the middle east yeah yeah you should show and, this class from the, the standard to the specialist and ask yes yes sure um uh, uh, thing is uh, proper yeah. yeah, thing is proper. We are getting uh, the earth value as zero as it is connected to the building. Uh, what is that? Uh, I forget the name. Uh, the basement, no? Mm, not the. Uh... Are you using uh, earthing called as pile earthing? Uh, yes, yes, you are right. The pile, uh, we are building then pile are, as earth. Pile as earth. Then you are in, yes. which is inside the structure yes. of the building, right? Yes, which is inside the uh, inside structure the of the steel building. structure of the building. Inside the steel sector of the yeah. building. This is your violation number two because earthing has to be outside the building, not inside your building. But uh, uh, IEC six two three of why is uh, allowing that, right? You no, by you pilot the earthing. Is, no, IEC six two three zero five is not allowing it. It is allowing to use outside the building structure. Oh, okay. Let me uh, look into that. Yeah, John, uh, so you can uh, write to Sir Gopakumar. It is very clearly written that uh, earthing system, if you need, I can also show this clause to you. Yes. Uh, but it takes some time. But uh, probably if you can connect me, uh, then I can uh, write to you and show you this, uh, this, uh, these clauses. So thanks, yes. thanks for the question. There are several other uh, yeah. the, the yeah, sure. people as well. Sure. Uh, Lakshmi, so you can log uh, my email address. Yes, please. Yeah, Lakshmi will type it on the chat box. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Gopakumar's mail ID will be there on the chat box. Uh, you can get in touch with him directly, sir. So you'll get more clarity and also you can interact in the future. Uh, Lakshmi, thank can you, you please? Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Lakshmi, please mention uh, Gopakumar, sir, uh, mail ID and uh, Mr. Padmanam, a number if you have. Okay, I'll uh, go to Jayant. Uh, uh, Jayant, if you wish to talk, uh, you are now uh, requested to put up your question. Uh, anyway, to I, Mr. John, uh, I have found out the clause in the standard. I was yeah. just searching. Uh, yeah. And you can see the heading of type A means vertical rod. You see, Type A yes. arrangement. This type of arrangement comprises a horizontal or vertical earth electrode installed outside the structure to be protected. Outside. Okay. So, you know, this word itself is clear. So I think further explanations are not required. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I will I will I will look into that, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, the mail ID is I'm... there uh, uh, of president at nfes.org. You can and probably can I have the contact number also, please? Yeah, uh, Lakshmi, uh, you can probably on private, you can give it to him directly. The number of uh, Mr. Mugopakuma. Uh, John, okay. Uh, yeah. Jayant, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, thank Mr. Gopakuma and Dominic, both of you. Uh, see, my question is uh, how the rocket launches uh, from where we launch the satellites are protected from the lightning protection. You are talking about protecting the launch pad or the rocket? Uh, launch. Launch, uh, launch, uh, if it is, uh, launch pad. Launch pad. The rocket is in launch pad prior to, uh, I mean, uh, we uh, shoot it. If, okay. See, for so, example, an yeah. isolated, uh, uh, isolated cantonary wire system has been made. If exactly. you find out from Google, there are some articles also published uh, about uh, the cantonary wire system which is in, installed in such installations. That means there are, if your uh, rocket launching station is, let's say, 50 meters, then there are four or five towers all around the area, which is much yes, taller yes. than this 50 meters, and there yes. are cantonary wires. Okay, sir. And my next question is just, uh, if we are in car and the lightning happens, can we say ourselves with the cage effect or what? It is general perception that inside the car you are safe, but there are some uh, news also spreading which says that the car is destroyed during lightning. But in general, uh, the car offers a kind of a Faraday cage from lightning you are protected. But uh, if something happens to the electronics of the car, then you are in danger. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So preferably, Actually. if you don't don't go, if you have a building and a car as two options oh. to protect from lightning, don't go to the car. Instead, you go to the building. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dent. Uh, I'll move on to my last uh, hand, which has been raised, is by Mahesh. Uh, Mahesh, I'll allow you to talk. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and speak, Mahesh. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, there is a document circulated by one of our vendor. It is uh, stating that High Court of Karnataka State allowing the uh, EAC type earthing, uh, uh, earthing in the Karnataka State. Is it uh, true or whatever? Uh, uh, what do you say about this? Sir, the EAC itself is wrong. Now regarding yeah. the court case, I am just showing you the screen. I'm sure you are you are able to see the screen, right? Yes, yes, yeah. sir. So if you go to our uh, website, Vidyut Suraksha, this was one of our old website. Before starting yeah. NFE, we were operating this website, vidyutsuraksha.com. And if you go to this blog, then if you scroll down, ESE Lightning Protection and its Legality in India, there is a blog where you can find out the, the order of the court then all the explanations, the reply from the BIS and how this is legally in India, all the explanations are given in this particular blog. Please go through it. Uh, the claims of uh, high court rejecting and all this is uh, all, uh, you know, like ESC, these are another claim. That's it. Yeah, this document is of uh, 23rd of November 22. I will uh, send it to you via email also. No, no, this, ma, ma, the blog which I am showing is 23 February. Okay, yeah. I think that blog, so uh, you can... All uh, the problems. Yeah. Sir, if you can uh, type, uh, paste it on the uh, chat box, that blog. Yeah. Yes. I just uh, Mahesh, it you can the see the uh, blog link that is given. Yes, sure. So you can probably download that once you visit that. Uh, yeah, website. sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are almost now one hour, 45 minutes. As you all know that, uh, you know, we just came back uh, from the tour of, uh, you know, Ahmedabad. Then we, yesterday we had in Chennai on the critical utility services talking about green electrical, green practices in electrical. We were there and Gopakumar was there. And uh, we, I am from Bangalore. We reached around 2 a.m. in the morning and we are on the, this thing. So uh, there are a lot of education. So we love this education and awareness program that NFE is, um, you know, taken up on its shoulder. Uh, if you've seen my colleagues, Lakshmi and Shonali, and uh, posting the upcoming events uh, uh, in various cities, next is in Kerala, then we are going to move to Pune, Kolkata, Delhi. So I would urge all the participants, first, I would request them to be a member of NFE because the more the people join, the more the inspiration we get, more the motivation we get. And we need intellectual like you uh, to participate because we need a lot of trainer. So we are going to run, train the trainer. So in various cities, we are uh, starting our core working committee. We are, sorry, we are opening a chapter in every city of the country. And the and the city uh, chapter will have core working committee under which will have various segment. So we need train the trainer. So I would uh, urge uh, those who are interested to be trained, and also you train whether it is an institution, whether it is a educate universities, colleges, and the common man. So we want to take up uh, to that. You know walk on the street and talk about the safety of electrical. So it, will, it is very important for, to, for your participation as a NFE member and also to join our various programs that we have initiated because India need to be electrically safe. Uh, when you look at the statistics, the number of electrocutions, number of uh, fire accidents due to electric uh, uh, wrong practices, we are far ahead of rest of the country. So to catch ahead and to help our, uh, in our prime minister ambition to achieve uh, electrically safe India, the new standard, which is now become a mandatory. If you are a consultant, please go through those standards. You know, uh, it is a legally vetted document 
and it's a mandatory. So please go through uh, these documents. It is available free in the BIS website. The standard is freely available. You, have to, you need to register, then log in and download. So I would urge everyone to go through this new standard that has come into practice. And also, finally, the next webinar, we will be writing to everyone who has been registered. We had 700 um, registration for this important. I think next uh, webinar is more related to building, uh, related to structure. So I would request you to invite your friends also. So let's make the next webinar more interactive and we'll, you know, we'll allow a question related, you know, we'll have a question answered almost for 45 minutes. So we'll ensure that all your question that is posted today is taken up again in the next uh, session. I would want to thank Mr. Gopal Kumar and also our General Secretary, Mr. Appawas, sir, with patiently listening to all this. And I'm sure he's making a note of it and trying to answer all those questions. So we have recorded all your questions. So if possible, after the second series, we will answer to your um, questions there. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gopal Kumar, for tie, you know, tie, I know you are really, really stressed out. Uh, you have a great weekend. Uh, today, Saturday and Sunday, I'm sure I would do you. I would urge you to take uh, take care of your health and take rest. And also, my colleague oh. was also supporting uh, the uh, webinar. No, no, no. I'm I'm uh, next uh, few hours. I'm uh, starting to Malaysia tomorrow. From Monday onwards, we have the IEEE seminar on lightning protection at uh, Malaysia. So I'm participating in the program. So I'm leaving in another few hours. <laughs> Oh, we show the very best. Uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we are fortunate uh, to have you in our uh, in a webinar and seminars. And your, uh, I know the reason you to go. It's it's a wonderful to meet your international speakers and international uh, expertise. And I'm sure you, those learning that you may get from there is again passed on to the uh, engineers in, in India. So we wish you all the very best and have a safe journey, sir. And we look forward to see you again. Thank you so much. And thank you all the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You have a great weekend and uh, be safe. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thanks to all. Thanks to all. Bye. Bye-bye.